But now let's consider the defenders who might make the dream team. In a career that spanned three World Cups, the tall, elegant Brazilian Jalma Santos brought a new dimension to the role of fullback. His tackling was tenacious. He was also a playmaker, his passing superbly accurate. He was blessed with great skill. It was his cross that created the opportunity for Varva to score against Czechoslovakia in the 1962 final. He showed confidence when in possession. To Charlton. Charlton might try to volley then to catch them. On the wrong foot and Charlton beaten by the great Jalma Santos. 71 caps he's got. Jalma Santos, who won World Cup winners' medals in 1958 and 62. Franz Beckenbauer burst onto the World Cup stage in 1966. From his first match, the world knew that a star had been born. Rolling it inside to Beckenbauer. Taylor, and this is the third one. Over right now, up to Beckenbauer. Oh, and this could well be the fourth one. Yes, this must be the fourth one, very difficult. But my goodness me, what a very, very good goal indeed. Beckenbauer. Yes, this must be it. A magnificent run there by Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer charmed fans with his stylish runs from deep in defence, but he only received a runners-up medal after defeat by England. Revenge was sweet four years later, as Beckenbauer helped to sweep Germany into the semi-finals. By 1974, he was captain. His presence was central to West Germany's campaign. Against the total football of Holland in the final, Beckenbauer would not be outdone. He was everywhere. Franz Beckenbauer, Der Kaiser, was the king of world football. Paul Breitner was in the engine room of the German team. He was at ease in either defence or attack. He was famous for his strong runs out of defence.
And who can forget his long-range shooting? His penalty in the 1974 final against Holland helped West Germany win the World Cup. It was to be the highlight of this great player's career. Rude Kroll, the great Dutch defender, was part of Holland's magnificent team in the 1970s. He could play anywhere and provided the ammunition for colleagues like Johan Cruyff. His speed and footballing instincts also allowed him to defend against the best players of his generation. Now it was Rudy Kroll. Rudy Kroll, 29 years old, but still got plenty of pace. And he possessed a savage shot. Well, he's got five in the wall at the moment. And the shot is there, but... Oh, he's the first Rudy Kroll! Kroll's reading of the game was fantastic. His distribution equally so. As captain in the 1978 final, he marshalled his players brilliantly. His long passes were a permanent thorn in the side of opponents. Rude Kroll, a complete player who instilled confidence in those around him. Bobby Moore started his World Cup career for England in 1962. Even then, his tackling and passing were exemplary. However, he really came of age in the 1966 World Cup. He will always be remembered as one of the greatest defenders to play for England. Long, accurate passes out of defence were his trademark. In the 1966 final, it was Moore's quick thinking that set up Hurst for England's first goal. In the same match, his tackle on Lothar Emmerich prevented a certain German goal.
Moore had the ultimate footballing honour of lifting the 1966 World Cup as captain of the host nation. 1970 saw Moore at his best. Against Brazil, he had his finest hour. What a player this fellow is. Bobby Moore, a gifted player and a great ambassador for his sport. Carlos Alberto was the mastermind behind the great Brazilian team of the 1970s. His adventurous overlapping runs from defence were a feature of Brazilian approach play. In the final against Italy, he scored a goal which has been immortalised as the greatest of all time. We know who did that. I don't think Brazil are going to do it here. Erzino. Faced by Facchetti. Oh, it's not a bad ball for Pelle on the right side. It's Carlos Alberto. Oh, what a great goal that was. <laughs> Carlos Alberto puts this game surely well beyond the reach of almost any side now. Alberto was an inspirational captain whose industry and defence was central to Brazil's victory. Daniel Passarella is best described as a purist's defender, solid in defence, dangerous in attack. He was confident enough to take vital penalties. His bravery went unquestioned. In 1978, he captained Argentina in the World Cup final against Holland. Although not particularly tall, he was a powerful header of the ball. but it's for his staunch defending that Passarella is best remembered. Willy van der Kerkhoff, ball through the middle for Rensenbrink, off to René van der Kerkhoff, Johnny Rep is far post. Captain Passarella wins very powerfully. Passarella, the rock upon which Argentina built their 1978 World Cup triumph. Out on the left here is Bossi to the left back. Shurea comes across. DDAC is coming to him. There's a player free over the far Gaetano side. Shurea Bossi. played at the heart of the Italian defence in the and 1970s and 80s. Well by Shurea. He was brave in the tackle. There you go. He firmly stopped by Shurea. He was always ready to push forward in support of the attack. Oh, Shurea. His composure Shurea on the ball again. and pinpoint passing were remarkable. And back onto the left foot and a good cross too. It comes from Bettega. Bettega slips it wide of the post, but a lot of credit there to this. Very polished sweeper, Gaetano Shurea. Lovely cross from his left foot. As sweeper, he was usually the last line of defence. His close control in difficult positions was superb.
Like all great players, he had the ability to make the game look easy. Unflappable Gaetano Scherrer 